Hi students! In this video I want to walk through measures of central tendency and variation, but I'm also going to really talk through some basics of Excel. So in my class I tend to have students who are on one end of the spectrum or the other, students that are better than me at Excel, and then I also have students that may have not even opened a workbook. Um, and so if you're in that second group of students, then this video will help you just get started. Um, and even if you are you've opened a workbook and you've not done very much with it, hopefully this will help you do some of the basic things that we would do in this class um, with Excel. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to start very basic. Each of these little boxes that you see on the screen is kind of like graph paper when you're looking at Excel. Each of the boxes are called cells. Um, and when we put in data, as I have here, I have a set of data, we put one piece of data per cell, and that allows us to do things with this data. Um, and you'll see why we do that in here in just a second as we work with this data. So um, you can also merge two cells together like I've done to kind of title this and I did that with the merge and center that's under your home tab so if I wanted to undo that and then so I just select it merge and center and that's how I've um, I've done that do it for three cells across okay um, and then I've, I've titled the columns here so these are my variables women and men and how long it took for them to use the restroom um, and so let's just do some things here. So some very basic functions like measures of central tendency and variation. So I'm going to start with the mean of this two pieces of data. We've got the women and the men here. Okay. Um, so if I wanted to take the average or the mean of all of the women and how long it took them, um, anytime I want to do any kind of computations, I want Excel to do some computations for me, I've got to use an equal sign to start out. So if I wanted to just simply do like 2 minus 1, I would have to do an equal sign and then type that because Excel would perform that operation, okay, as you can see there, okay. But in this case, I want to call a function. Excel has tons of functions built in, um, one of which is the average function. They don't call it the mean, they call it the average, okay? And as you see, as I type this, we've got a little box pop up and tell me some, some different types of functions that, um, that I could use here, um, some different names of functions that I could use here. So this first one, of course, the average is, is built in. So I know that Excel recognizes that function and will perform it, okay? For instance, if I started typing mean, Excel doesn't call uh, the average the mean. We know those are the two are the same things. They call it an average. Um, so as I type mean, that little box doesn't pop up, meaning that Excel does not recognize that particular function name. Okay, but they still have it as an average. And then I do use a parenthesis because I want to take the average of something. So those so that. Um, values that I'm taking the average of, I'm going to put in parentheses. I could simply type it, so I could do like 93, comma 183, and it would take the average of these numbers and I can do as many as I want. But to save us some time, which is the whole reason for Excel, I'm not going to do that typing. I'm going to come over here to where my data is and I'm going to select it all. And the way you do that is you click on your first data value and you drag your cursor down and you can drag it left or right too if I wanted to take the average of everything, okay, or you can drag it up or down. So let's just take the average of the women here. So I just click and drag over that or you could do, um, of course, click on one, hold your control button and use your down arrow keys, which is, I do that a lot as well, okay. Um, and then you can go back and, and change what you're taking your selection of even after you've taken it. And if you come up here, you can see that you've your A3 through A38 are selected. So A3 is the first cell. It's in the A column 3 row. And then that colon means it's through the next cell. So it's through A38, okay, which is this last cell. And you can visually see that being selected there. Close my parentheses because I've got all my data hit enter and there is the average of this data set. Ok, 
Okay. Um, if I click on that again up here, you can see what's been entered into your cell. So you can see kind of the background of what Excel is doing. If you want to edit it, you can edit it up here. You can also double click on the cell and it'll allow you to edit here. Okay. So, oops. All right, um, so something else that's really interesting in Excel that you can do is if you notice when I have this selected, I've got a little solid box here at the bottom right hand corner um, and I can move my cursor over to that box and I can drag it um, to another cell. I can drag it down or I can drag it to the right and what it's going to do is it's going to do the same function um, to the cells in the direction that I'm dragging that to. So if I wanted to, in this case, do the average to the cells just to the right of the data that I just selected, I can simply grab that little box, click and drag to the right. And look at that. This is, if you look up here, click it, and you can see it's selected here, it took the average of the data directly to the right of the data that I'd already selected. Okay, so it copies the function, but it drags it and it does it in the direction that you drag it to the data in that direction. Okay, um, if I were to drag this down, for instance, okay, let's see what it does, and it doesn't like that, by the way, it's kind of telling you that's not might not be what you want to do. But what it did is it drug it one cell down. Okay, so it took the average of one cell down all the way. You can see it's, it's you know, one extra down here. All right, and it put up a little warning sign here, and you can click it and read the warning um, that it emits adjacent cells, which means it's taking, it's letting you know that there's a cell right there that that probably should be included in that average that you didn't grab. So that's that's um nice to, to know sometimes if I were to accidentally miss a data point, not drag it long, long enough or something. So even if I were to just have it like that, it would probably give me that error. So it kind of lets you know there's probably a data point there that you're, you're missing. So and in that case, um, is nice as well. All right, so some basics talking about the average. Um, you can do the median and the mode in Excel as well. Okay, I'll do that really quick. It's the function is called median. You can always just Google like how do I do a median in Excel? Um, what is the function name for the average in Excel or the mean in Excel? Okay, I'm going to drag that one to the right as well. All right, and then the mode. Same set of data. And we'll do the mode of the men as well. Okay, uh, I have some formatting on some of these cells. You can see the, the dot zero zero giving me two decimal places. You can change that to uh, format it however you want. So the median, let's round it to a whole number since they are coming out as whole numbers. Um, and to do that, I'm going to just click and drag and select the two medians here. Use my cursor and do a right click on my mouse. Um, and then you can format your cells. Okay, so I'm going to hit format cells this menu um, and our cells are formatted as numbers a lot of times the default is general but you can change it to a number and you can change the number of decimal places that you have so let's turn it to zero okay so we don't need decimal places here and these are formatted um, if I go to it to give me two decimal places so it's rounded to two decimal places otherwise it would just give me as many decimal places it could fit in that cell so it gets a little bit messy let me just show you an example of that um, if it was in the general format, which is the default, okay, it would just fill up that cell with as many decimal places as it has, okay. So you can see that if I make the cell bigger, it's going to give me some more decimal places. And that's kind of a mess, so that's why I've formatted it so that it's a number and it's just giving me two decimal places, rounding to two for me. Okay, let's do the standard deviation. We like our measures of variation as well. I'm going to call it STDEV. 
you've seen me abbreviate it like that in class. And what's nice is that's what it is in Excel, STDEV. Now you have a dot S option or a dot P option. The this stands for either sample or population. This is a sample. We've not observed every single woman um, and every single man that has come in and out of that that um, bathroom just for a certain period of time is all we've observed. So it's a sample. So I use dot S, select the data, hit enter, and I'm also going to do that for the men as well. So click and drag and we get the standard deviation for the men. And this is of course, like I've talked about, just a ton of decimal places. Let's format so that it's just giving us two. So format it as a number. So much prettier. We also might want to be looking at the range, but bad news, range is not built into Excel. Um, and so I need to find it. And we know that it is the largest value minus the smallest value. Okay, but it's a little hard to kind of look through and find the smallest and largest value. Luckily with Excel, you can sort. So I'm gonna highlight this by just clicking and dragging. Come over here, I'm in the Home tab over here to sort and filter and I'm going to sort smallest to largest. And I have this pop up and there's two options. I can expand the selection and what this would do is it would sort um, everything to, uh, in that column plus everything after that column. So it would kind of freeze all these together so that 93 would stick with that 49. So let's show you what that's going to do if I were to expand the selection. That's going to keep everything together. Okay, it doesn't like that because of the merged cells there. Um, so luckily that's not what we need. We don't want to kind of keep this data together. Let me unmerge it. So let's see if it'll do it now. Okay. Okay, so that, what that did is it sorted the data and it kept everything tied together. Okay, so that that first data value, let me back up, that was that 9349, that should stay together. So let me find 93 and it should be stuck with the 49 and it is. Okay, um, and so that kind of froze them together. Really good when you're dealing with correlation and regression uh, that we'll get to eventually. It's also good like I sort, I have your names over here in a column with your grade sheet in Excel and then your grades. Sometimes I sort you by section, sometimes I sort you alphabetically and I always want to expand the selection because I want your grade to stay with your name. So I don't want to just sort your names. I want your names to be sorted and keep everything following your names with it. Okay, so this kind of froze them together when I did that. However, that's not something we really need to do. We really just need to sort the women least to greatest and the men least to greatest because this isn't like women one and then stuck with that man. They don't have to stay together. Um, they're independent of each other. So we're going to sort smallest to largest and we're going to continue just with the current selection. So in this case, it's just going to sort that that I selected. Okay, and then we can do the range equals largest data value, which is down here at the bottom because I sorted lar um, smallest to largest, minus the smaller, and then you can see that I've, I'm referring to cells, I'm clicking on those cells, I could do equals 311 minus 46, or I could click on those cells either way, okay, and then I can drag and do the same thing here, however, I haven't sorted this, so let's sort the min independently as well, smallest to largest, we want to continue with the current selection, just sort what I have selected. Okay, and that changes the range, of course. Okay, so now it's doing the 432 minus the 47. All right, hopefully that gets you started in Excel and also shows you how to do the mean, median mode and some measures of central tendency, of course, and then the standard deviation range, the measures of variation. Okay, hope you have a good day. Bye.